Justin Hawkins writes again. Good day to you. It is I, Justin Hawkins. Like, subscribe. It's Christmas time. That means um, it's time to analyse a Christmas song. This seems to be the most pertinent of Christmas analyses or breakdowns or dissections, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm a little bit snotty, but don't worry, I just tested negative for COVID. What? Um, <laughs> so I'm going to do Ed and uh, Ed Sheeran and Elton John's uh, song called Merry Christmas. So kiss me under the mistletoe. Um, I saw Ed Sheeran, he was on uh, on a chat show and he was saying that when they were looking for a title for the Christmas song they realised that nobody had ever done a, a song that was called Merry Christmas before. It was always called Merry Christmas, War Is Over or um, you know there was some parentheses or it was Happy Christmas or Christmas Happiness or It's Christmas Happy, you know just no one's ever done it. So that represented an open goal for them. Some thoughts about um, Ed and Elton, which based on stats. Hang on, here's some stats. Ready? Okay, so the song is called Merry Christmas. The song is raising money for the Ed Sheeran Suffolk Music Foundation and the Elton John AIDS Foundation. I don't know much about the Ed Sheeran um, Suffolk Music Foundation, but I'm from Suffolk and I do music, so whatever it is, I'm probably going to be behind it. And the Elton John AIDS Foundation, I think that's... Uh, He's, he's achieved a lot with that thing already, hasn't he? He's uh, saved, well, millions of lives and destigmatized uh, the disease itself. Um, and obviously Elton John's amazing. I've met him a couple of times, actually, just uh, as, a, as a human being. I, I really love him. So, Oh, he recommended a shepherd's pie to me um, at the Ivy once. Um, and I took it, and it was delicious. Because when Elton tells you to put something in your mouth... That's what you do. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. Sorry. No, no, no. We'll cut that out, right? We might not cut that out. <sighs> okay, so anyway. Uh, apparently the song has been number one for two weeks. Oh, this is, this is more of an Ed Sheeran stat. He's sold more than 26 million albums and 100 million singles. <laughs> Worldwide. <laughs> this is brilliant. It's like when you used to look at... Um, when you used to look at the sort of numbers that Tom Jones was doing in the sort of 70s and 60s, it's like, well, you know, he may, he, I mean, Tom Jones was selling, like, I don't know what his stats are, we'd have to probably look them up for, for this to be in, in any way accurate, but an artist like Tom Jones would, he would say, he sold a million albums, but you know, to be honest, he recorded 50, so, um, but you know, Ed is a prolific songwriter and he's and he's really he sells a lot of records and he's one of those nice blokes as well when you meet him he's just he's a lovely boy lovely boy so another one of those people where it's easy to slag him off because it seems seems like he's the he's the establishment but there's something bulletproof about him because his his um uh what's the word his roots are singing in the street with an acoustic guitar it immediately puts him a level up from people who win, for example, talent shows. Not to diss anybody that's won a talent show, because some of those people work really hard. But you can't really compare them to somebody who has the ability to entertain passers-by and make a living on the streets of Dublin outside the metro station. Is there a metro station in Dublin? Probably not. The taxi rank, then. There must be one of those. Yeah. Outside the, the pub. There's definitely pubs. I've seen them. Right. Elton has had 57 top 40... <laughs> 57 top 40 hits. I've probably written like 150 songs in my life. 57 top 40 hits in the United States. Second only to Elvis Presley in total. These are... That's crazy, isn't it? He was doing more than an album a year in the 70s, and that stuff is fucking amazing. Um, listen to Mad Man Across the Water. It will change your life if you haven't heard it already. It's a great album full of brilliant songs... Uh, produced by Gus Dudgeon, uh, I think engineered probably by um, um, a uh, not embryonic, but uh, but certainly a young um, Roy Thomas Baker, who went on to produce uh, Bohemian Rhapsody and make a lot of advances in the realms of rock music production. Certainly uh, inspired a rethink in terms of what's possible. So some amazing people involved in this. Twenty seven. Top 10. What? Top 10 hits and nine number ones in America. 
And and Rufus told me yesterday he's been doing this um, Las Vegas residency. That's how you. There are some quite considerable artistic considerations when you uh, do those things. So Elton's doing well, and and he's saving lives, and he's a knight of the realm, a knight of the realm. Um, so yeah, he gets my approval. Um, in fact, this song, I must confess, um, full disclosure, I do indeed, uh, perhaps I made a little cameo in the video. I was obscure, they did their best to obscure me behind a another man's hair. <laughs> but, but I'm in there, uh, playing a clarinet, because you know, that's what I do. Um, wearing my Christmas cat suit, so just... It's just, I can't be impartial. So let's do a dissection as opposed to offer an opinion of it. It's a great, it's a great moment really because it's going to save lives and it's going to do something positive for musicians from Suffolk. I don't know what it's going to do, but it will certainly put some money their way via the foundation. What really matters uh, about the Christmas race is which of the Christmas songs is going to become the sort of lasting and enduring standard that re-emerges every year subsequent to its release, you know. Like, for example, a Christmas song might go to number two and then just not, you know, not quite make it to number one, but then be around every year like a bad penny smell. Uh, no, like a bad, like a good penny. No. <laughs> just, it will linger like a... No, um... Like... <laughs> it, you know what I'm saying. You know, if if you get the Christmas song right, then it will come back and it will keep coming back. Like, for example, if it was a rock band uh, from East Anglia that did it, it maybe it will be a number one in the rock charts, uh, rock singles charts every year, seemingly. And it will be played in compilations and in supermarkets and so on and so forth. The point I'm making is, the most important thing is that you do a good Christmas song. It doesn't matter if it goes to number one. We'll dance in the kitchen while I'm we both know love, this love we got is the best of all. So you have to say all in that owl way to make it rhyme with glow. Fair enough though, it's Christmas. I wish you could see you through my eyes, then you would know. My God, you look beautiful. Right now, Merry Christmas. The Merry Christmas payoff happens there. Again, it's one of these um, C. Down to A minor, the relative minor of C. F. G, it's all fairly common sense. Hang on a second. There's another Christmas song. Christmas, A minor. Time, down in the bells end. Ooh, that's nice. No. Um, okay. Dance in the kitchen while embers glow. We both know love, this love we got is the best. All right, we're in nursery rhyme territory. That's good. While we hear, can we all spare a thought? We're here, you know, spare a fort for the ones who've gone. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, so there's a little bit of a, a tinge of melancholy and sadness as they spare a fort in the chorus, in fact, for the ones who have gone. It's kind of, it's not Covidian, is it? I mean, it's they've, they've made they've made the um, decision, I think, to to make to do something that isn't informed by the pandemic, but it does allude to some folks who have passed away. And I, I know that um, a couple of um, Ed's mates did die, didn't they? This is probably really personal, actually, but I knew one of them, um, Steve Strange, really well. And I knew the other one, um, uh, Michael Gadinsky, quite well. So it has all of this sort of Christmas, um, Christmas song tropes in the lyric. You've got things like mistletoe. So kiss me under the mistletoe, pour out the wine, let's toast and pray for December snow. That's nice, isn't it? Mistletoe, December snow, that's good. And it's got wine, so mistletoe and wine in the first two, two lines, but it's not 
Christmas time, mistletoe and wine, children singing Christian rhyme. It's not that, but it, but it mentions those two things in the first two lines. Let's toast and pray for December snow. I know there's been pain this year, it's time to let it go. Next year, you never know, but for now, Merry Christmas. That's nice. We've both known love, but this love we got is the best of all. So this is two people of a certain age, actually, isn't it? It's not the first flush of, of love. It's, it's more people who have come together after living a little bit. And maybe that's more especial. I wish you could see it through my eyes, then you would know. My God, you look beautiful right now. Merry Christmas. Oh, it's lovely. The fire is raging on. We'll all sing along to the song. Just having so much fun while we're here. Meaning, while we're still alive. Can we all spare a thought for the ones who've gone? Merry Christmas, everyone. So it leans into a lament just in a couple of, of moments, doesn't it? It sort of reflects in a sombre way, just in a couple of points. I think the best Christmas songs do that, actually. It's usually like, um, think about Last Christmas, that's all about like um, seeing somebody at a party that you had a relationship with the previous year and who's, um, who broke your heart on, on Boxing Day. So there's sort of, it's bittersweet, isn't it? Um, this one is, um, the emphasis is on the sweet, but there is a couple of little moments that are sort of just melancholic. It's just a Christmas song, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a Christmas song. It's got all the stuff you'd expect to see in a Christmas song. Um, not seeing any puns, though. Could have done some. Could have done with a pun, couldn't it? If you hear the sound, <laughs> if you're overhearing the sound of rampant lovemaking, I'm in a hotel where just a lot of weird stuff happens. Um, they probably think I'm weird. I'm going to do this. Justin Hawkins writes a uh, uh, uh. Merry Christmas. <laughs>